really worried this time though, because this one sounds like a monster. All of a sudden, it was right upon us, within seconds, and we had time to say, get in the house. We got in the house, and it just exploded all around us. Oh, it was terrible. It was like a train coming. That's what it sounds like. It's so noisy. A crowd of us watched in a numbed silence as houses exploded. These words are horribly familiar to those of us who lived through the black summer of 2019-20 in Australia. Petrified voices from places like Malakuta, Kangaroo Island and Kabago were on our radios and TV screens night after night during the summer months. These voices are a cry for action. They signify the urgent, desperate need for us all to realise that climate change is happening now, right here at home, and we have to do something about it. Hello, my name is Ben Newell, and I'm a professor in the School of Psychology at UNSW. My research focuses on the psychology of human judgment and decision making, and I'm passionate about translating that research into effective climate action. SDG 13 focuses on taking urgent climate action to combat climate change by regulating emissions, promoting developments in renewable energy. The types of action include strengthening resilience and adaptive capacity to climate related hazards in all countries, as well as integrating climate change measures into national policies and plans. Perhaps most important for our context, though, is the target for improving education, awareness raising, and human and institutional capacity on climate change mitigation, adaptation, impact reduction, and early warning. So what does this all mean? For example, what is the difference between mitigation and adaptation? This analogy might help. Imagine you're on a ship that is sinking because of a leak. If you want to stay afloat, you've got to act fast. An adaptation response would be to grab a bucket and start bailing out the water. This would address the effect, water accumulating in the boat, but not the cause, the hole in the hull. Mitigation would be a different strategy. It goes directly to the cause of the problem. So on the ship, this would amount to grabbing planks and corking gun and trying to fix the leak by sealing up the hull. You can see how important mitigation is. There's only so long you can keep bailing out water before the ship goes down. And unfortunately, the ship is going down because greenhouse gases are still rising and climate change is occurring at rates much faster than anticipated just a few years ago. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has reached over 410 parts per million in 2019, which is well over 100% higher than in the pre-industrialized era. This rise in emissions makes a warming trajectory of 1.5 degrees to 2 degrees, the stated goal of the UN, increasingly difficult to realize and emphasizes why we must act to reduce our emissions now. Ultimately, human behavior has caused climate change, and it's only by changing human behavior that we're going to solve the problem. That's why, as a professor of psychology, I'm passionate about understanding the triggers for behavior change. How can we nudge people to make different decisions? How can we change things to make it easier for people to make the pro-environmental choice? There are many barriers to taking action. The friction cost of having to learn something new, the discounting of the future that makes the impacts of climate change seem a long way off, and the feeling that whatever I can do won't make a difference. But there are lots of simple actions that are easy to implement and effective, especially if we all adopt them. There's considerable power in aggregating actions across the collective. If the 40,000 plus UNSW community gets on board, then the impact of individual actions becomes considerable. The list of simple things we can do is endless, and many of the actions are probably very familiar to you. Actions like reducing car use and increasing public transport, or even better, walking or cycling. Reducing the amount of food waste you create, only buy what you need and eat what you buy. Eating more plant-based food. This does not mean becoming vegetarian or vegan overnight, but cutting down on animal products helps a lot. Another avenue for urgent climate action is to get engaged with community, university and political groups. Again, there's power in numbers. Getting the message across to those in charge of policy is incredibly important. The key target of SDG 13 is to integrate climate change measures into national policies, strategies and planning. If this is to happen, then those in power need to know that the community wants change to happen. Sometimes promoting this kind of action from encouraging people to take the bus, joining a protest, can lead to resistance. Perhaps because people think they can't make a difference or because they don't believe it's necessary to act, so-called climate skeptics. Engaging with skeptics can be tricky. Sometimes the facts just don't penetrate. 
but there are various strategies to combat misinformation on climate change. One of the simplest is to provide an alternative explanation to whichever myth a skeptic might be holding on to. So don't just say that's wrong or the correct answer is X, but explain why. For example, to debunk the myth that the sun is somehow causing global warming, point out that the temperature of the sun and globe have been going in opposite directions over the past decade. Getting over the it does not make a difference hurdle can also be difficult. One approach here is to appeal to the morality of needing to act. A good analogy is to think about your tax dollars. If you want access to the social goods and services that taxes provide, then you should pay your share, even if it's only a tiny proportion of the total paid in the country. If you neglect this obligation, then you're saying that although you agree that taxes are a good thing, because you benefit from what they provide, you're not willing to do your fair share. Climate change is similar. If, as a society, we have agreed that reducing emissions is an urgent and necessary action, then I, as a member of that society, need to do my fair share to help achieve that goal. Anything else would be moral free riding. In many ways, SDG 13 lies at the heart of UNSW's Environmental Sustainability Plan. Climate action in all forms can help with efficient management of water, SDG 6, availability of affordable and reliable energy, SDG 7, the resilience and sustainability of our built environment, SDG 11, and our sustainable consumption and production pattern, SDG 12. So many of these goals are dependent on changing our behaviour, and thus understanding the drivers of behaviour and the ways we can change our thinking, and therefore our actions, is absolutely crucial. This also means that we can't tackle the SDGs and SDG 13 in particular without thinking about the contributions of the individual. The Paris Climate Agreement is the most important global initiative we currently have on climate change, but it focuses firmly on contributions on a national scale. But what about us as individuals? Can we have our own individual climate agreement with ourselves, our family, our friends? Or what about a UNSW community climate agreement? Lots of research on the drivers of behaviour change shows the importance of implementation plans and commitment devices as a way of getting people to do things. So why not create a list of your own? Just think about the time you spend getting to and from campus, your time on campus, and even actions you take around the home. Consider the options and alternatives you have for each decision. Car or bus or bike. Veggie or meat. Reusable cup or single use. Bottled water or water fountain. Spend the morning at the beach or join a climate rally. Watch Netflix or email your local MP. The list is endless. Make your own and commit. And get others involved too, so we can start some real behaviour change. If we all act urgently, there's real hope that those voices from the bushfires will be an anomaly rather than the news.